welcome back to another round of basis picks as always please like and subscribe share with a friend a colleague a relative an associate an enemy and any and all in between i appreciate it what i'm gonna do on this one a little bit different i'm gonna do main events plus a certain undisputed well actually it's not even undisputed it's a unified uh title fight and i'm just gonna touch on a couple of the undercard fights on both of the events taking place tomorrow let's start with the queensbury card taking place at the ovo arena wembley okay so i'm actually looking forward to seeing ezra the cannon taylor in his seventh pro fight taking on joel mcintyre who i believe is 20 and 7 at this point um, I am expecting Ezra to get that work done and I'm actually expecting to get it done inside the distance as well So uh, looking out for that one. That should be a good bit of fun uh, Moses Atalma also on the card. Um, he making steady progress up uh, his sort of uh, ladder towards success His fifth fight, I believe I know he wanted to be a lot more active than he has been but you know one step at a time um, Alois Jr. as well, uh, big up to him, met him a couple days back, uh, had a sort of a, a good little chop up, so I'm expecting him to kind of get the KO in his sixth professional fight also. And then we've also got the um, return of Anthony Yacht, who I can't even remember who he's fighting right now. It was TBA yesterday, and I think there is someone on the dockets. Um, look, the Ricky Summers fight was bad enough, but from ricky summers pulls out of the fight then you i can't expect to you know go in there with anyone else of a decent level so at this point in time this is a throwaway is what it is let's just get it over and done with and hope that the next fight doesn't have to be another world title fight because that's not how he needs to be building himself right now just good upper quality level fights that gain him steady experience that just gain him more knowledge more rounds in the bank uh, to work towards those world titles moving forward however look let's get to the main event because that's all we really care about and that's all i'm particularly interested in um apart from a couple of other small vested interests Zhile zhang or zhang Zhile and joe joyce the rematch is it repeat or revenge or i guess joe Joyce would say repeat or redemption just seen the weigh-in about 45 minutes ago hour ago um i did a show yesterday whereby i said do not be surprised if joe Joyce comes in in the 280s uh, i think i said the the mid he could be as high as the mid 280s he ended up coming in at 281.75 pounds, I believe. So 281 and three quarter pounds. The heaviest he's ever been in his career. His previous career heaviest was against Joseph Parker, which was 271 and a quarter, I believe. So he's 10 pounds heavier than that. He's also at this stage 27 or 28 pounds heavier than he was um, in the first fight against Jean Gillet. So um, this doesn't bode well for me. He's already said, oh, everyone said I came in too light for the other one. So I've taken the constructive criticism and I, you know, we put on weight necessary for this fight. Well, you haven't just put on weight like you've put on fat you've put on mass like you've put on you've you've put on anchors to your to your frame now luckily joe joyce is one of those guys that can carry a quite heavy mass like his his body frame normally carries weight extremely well so the fact that i saw a gut on him yesterday and obviously seeing his his belly pushing over his boxes today to me doesn't bode well now yeah he's known as the juggernaut he's got an amazing stamina an amazing engine but what happens when you put a weighted uh, a weighted rucksack on someone who's used to running at say 12 miles an hour they're not going to run at 12 miles an hour anymore are they? they're probably going to run at maybe nine miles an hour eight miles an hour and get a lot more tired during the process 
that's going to be the exact same thing here now um Zhang Jale, he also came in heavier than the first fight but not by as much i think it was only about seven or eight pounds heavier now i say only that still can be a massive uh problem especially when a lot of people do believe him to have a serial gas tank problem and that he slows down in rounds especially after like round four but i think that due to him just naturally being at that weight longer now than um joe joyce because i think maybe three or four years ago he was about 265 um he him moving up a stone from there is a lot different than someone who's been up at a weight and then has gone down a huge amount of weight and then has shot himself back up ultimately Jalei Zhang has been used to walking around in and around that kind of size for a while. Joe Joyce is yo-yoing between the two, the the early to mid 250s all the way up to the 270s and now the 280s. He's never fought at that condition before. So my my assessment would be his whole idea is to try and mow Zhang down in the first half of the fight. Whereas a lot of people said he needs to tuck up, get safe, try and um, try and step to his left instead of stepping to his right, uh, stepping away from the backhand and trying to stay busy with Zhang, but keep him just keep composed up until sort of round four or five, then start applying pressure to him after that. At the size he is now, with the the loss of foot speed that he would have because i've always maintained his feet are very quick he's, he's always gets to the target faster than people realize even his jab is quite is is quite quick or, or steady times it's always just a backhand that takes a long time to to sort of reach the target but now you've got an extra 28 pounds on you from the last fight and the last fight your punches weren't being thrown that quickly so how quickly are they going to travel this time how quickly are your legs going to move now you're probably going to compromise your gas tank which is one of the best attributes you had bearing in mind in what some people called his best performance against joseph parker there were several rounds in there that he actually took off in the middle because he was starting to tire because he was that heavy so look here's the keys to victory joe joyce he's got a move to his left which is something that he's never seemed proficient at doing but he's got to stay away from that backhand he's probably got to change up here the guard he employs rather than trying to employ a tight guard or even a chin guard um as ring iq suggested maybe that cross guard might be the best tactic especially to try and protect the eyes in that first instance he's got to try and roll with some punches so he, he's got to stay almost side on so that he can he can roll his neck with the punches possibly even trying to switch switch his head off the line if possible something he's not really used to doing um i reckon his best bet is to try and rush in on zhang's spacing close the distance collapse the pocket and try and see if he can just out wrestle and out grapple him on the inside and use that as a method to slow him down and tire him out and then get to work a few rounds after and what has Jean got to do ultimately he's got to do exactly what he done in the first fight but throw more feints especially feint the backhand like you're going to shoot the backhand angle off to the side uh shoot the front hand the front hand uh hook because he was throwing he when he was throwing those hooks especially uh at close quarters they were still having success so maybe you you know you pat down the jab use the jab feint the backhand slip off throw the hook um and it's the punches that joyce doesn't see coming that he can't brace for that tend to hurt him also it might be an idea for Zhang to target the body because um the most visibly hurt we've seen joe dress apart from the Zhang jale fight was when he fought trevor bryant i mean uh bryant jennings sorry um and bryant jennings hurt him to the body with a quick shot that he wasn't expecting which folded him over and had jennings have had more power and more strength at that particular point 
that may have been an issue for um, Joe Joyce. So that's my brief keys to success as to how uh, Joe Joyce can kind of, I guess, get his redemption and how Jean Gelet stamped his authority on this. Now, my personal opinion, the weight never had any issue as to how um, Joe Joyce lost the first fight. It was technical deficiencies. It was a lack of awareness and possibly an overestimation of your punch resistance and an underestimation of how powerful the person you was fighting was and how much of a, a good slick operator that person was. And I don't think in five months there's been enough preparation that could, you know, that can really uh, change that. So I bring everyone back to the time before the first fight, I said I had that dream where Jean Gelet dropped Joe Joyce in the second and the fourth round. Then we get into the fight and in the second round, he severely hurts Joe Joyce, wobbles him, staggers him into the ropes like we've never seen. And he does a very similar thing again in the fourth round. It wasn't like the dream, but this one could very much be like that. I am actually thinking that Joe Joyce does get taken off of his feet in this fight. I don't know when. I mean, it might be dream settings. It might be the second. It might be the third. It might be the fourth. But my ultimate prediction is that Jale is a lot more confident in this fight than he was in the first one. He's been training a lot harder. He's employed better preparation for this fight in terms of like his strength and conditioning and everything else like he wants this badly and I think I could be wrong but I actually think that his heart and his will for this fight is a little bit more than Joe's I think I feel like Joe maybe felt he had to take this rematch rather than actually wanting to take this rematch I don't think the eye is totally healed and you know Derek Chisora said that Jean Gelea said he's going to target that eye he might even target the other eye, the one which has all the scar tissue and scar damage around it. And if that's the case, how does that eye hold up? But he might go to the body. He might be playing mind tricks. He might not even target the eyes. He might just go straight for the chin. Um, however, on my predictions, um, on my predictions league, I put down Zhang Jale to win in the fifth round. And after seeing the weigh in, I can't change that. So I, I think it ends earlier than it did the first time. I think it ends more emphatically than it did the first time. And I think, yeah, Zhang Jale does win this fight via KO. Not even technical, not even just ref stoppage, medical stoppage. I think it is a KO. Um, yeah, fifth round. And that's, that's my, that's my, pick that's my opinion please leave yours down below let me know what you think okay, so moving over to the matchroom card taking place at the Carib Royale in uh, I think it's Orlando Florida um, main event is Richardson Hitchens versus Jose Cepeda aka Chun Cepeda now the headlines of this bout of this whole card at the moment has come via Conor Ben being put onto the card now nah, I've got no issue with that. I'm not going to break down that fight. I've um, I've seen Rodolfo Orozco two times, I think, uh, a couple years back. Um, I'm expecting, a, you know, a Conor Ben KO within, I think, about round sort of six or seven. I, I think that fight will that fight will end because Rodolfo, from what I remember, is quite strong, and he's never been stopped before. But he's also never fought any sort of a top level opposition the fights i really want to talk about oh actually uh shout out to khalil cole by the way i do think he's a i think he's gonna have a pretty impressive performance uh, a couple other women's fights on the cards so i will be interested in that amor williams versus steve rolls i do think amor williams will get a victory i think he's gonna win on points um steve rolls a slick operator there's gonna be some shaky moments in there for ammo i definitely think that as well um but yeah i think he will just about nickel points decision uh maybe like a, a 96 94 type scenario now let's talk about really quick jessica mccaskill versus sandy ryan in this fight you've got ultimately pressure fighter versus boxer puncher um 
Now Sandy Ryan is definitely the more technically put together. She spent a much longer time in an amateur system than Jessica McCaskill has. Um, and she's a lot more, um, I guess, textbook in that sense. Now, sometimes that is to a person's detriment because someone like Jessica McCaskill, who is extremely unorthodox in everything she does, causes um you know an orthodox person uh, a textbook person to get flustered and not know exactly what to do to offset what's happening um however after the erica farias loss i feel as if um sandy ryan has basically come on leaps and bounds in terms of her her skill set in terms of her punch selection her and also her iq in the ring knowing when to try and brawl and engage with someone and when to stay on the back foot jabbing and moving and you know in playing the backhand and slipping off to the side now she is the much taller person than jessica mccaskill i think there's about four inches height difference between the two of them three to four inches and she's also i think got the reach advantage so if she keeps this fight long right behind that stick tries to control it behind the stick doesn't allow jessica to to sort of uh bulldoze in wild or swing uh swing from wild angles especially with the left i think she can make it a fairly easy night's work with the only problem she has is having when to take rests in between the rounds because jessica will be on on top of her in that ring for almost every second of every round she will find the, the energy there but um sandy ryan has basically got a she's she's got a, she's got to let the backhand go when jessica steps in wildly use the jab to keep her to keep her honest when jessica tries to rush in shoot that backhand step around the side that's her that's her easiest way to success um this fight is definitely going the distance it won't it won't get stopped on the car it won't get uh, stopped um no knock um, no knockouts no i don't think there would be any cuts or stoppages like that no ref stoppages i do think it goes to the cards and i do think sandy ryan gets a unanimous decision win probably a 97 93 um or like a 97 94 um and yeah moves on with her career now moving on to the main event really quickly so you've got richardson hitchens versus jose chon zapeda um zapeda is the puncher of the two they are uh, he is also a uh, boxer puncher a pressure not so much a pressure in one more he likes to sort of set things up behind the counter now richardson hitchens is a, definitely a pure boxer he's economical he works on the outside he finds his angles that way and he, he uses he opens up his shots in that particular fashion all of that is a way for him to be able to to maintain distance and control now the fact that Sapeda isn't a pressure fighter um richardson hitchens won't will never be worried about whether he can last the rounds and go the distance in this particular fight i believe this is his first 12 rounder though so that's the only thing that he's gonna maybe be wondering can i actually uh, go that go those rounds can i go those rounds now i think in the first couple in the first couple rounds i reckon he's going to be extra cautious um you know setting everything up just basically trying to get the measure of of zapeda just making sure it doesn't you know doesn't give himself any undue stress and then sort of towards like round five six seven i feel like he's going to start to take over a lot more convincingly um employ the backhand a lot more land a lot more powerful shots um i think he may drop zapeda somewhere in the mid to late rounds uh, but i do think ultimately he's going to coast to a unanimous decision win um and i think it will be a fairly convincing one um if it's a 12 rounder i'm thinking eight to four nine to three type situation and the, the rounds that he does lose i think are going to be more because he's almost having a look or he's having to recover um i don't know how i don't know if he's going to take anything crazy in in this fight but um i think if he does he will be able to sort of you know um walk it off so to speak and just try and uh 
keep himself you know keep himself lucid get back composed and sort of get back to work so my prediction is um yeah richardson hitchens unanimous decision win in a quite comfortable quite controlled manner um and then moving on to the next the next level in his career so that's what I think of what's going on this weekend. Leave your comments down below. Let me know who you've got in all of these fights. Um, I'll be interested to, to see that. Uh, thank you very much for watching. But for right now, Space Picks locked.